Hi everybody and welcome to Adventure Mode. I know the game might look slightly different, but I assure you it's the same video game under the hood. Um, we're gonna generate a new world. This is version 47. Please don't run away screaming, I know it's ASCII. Uh, we will be playing more normal Dwarf Fortress in a little bit here. Uh, we're gonna leave you on medium. Eh, we'll put you up to high so there's more stuff to do. Uh, we'll put, uh, actually no, we'll, we'll leave that there. We'll, we'll just increase the number of sites. Um, beasts will leave, savagery will leave, mineral occurrence is irrelevant, and go. So this is the new region, which is the ever-seeing land, and we're gonna go on adventures here. Um, this is, uh, you know, we're in the golden age. We're going up to year 250, I think. Um, that's interesting, golden age. Hmm. Region four, adventurer. So adventure mode, like I've talked about many times, is kind of the glue that uh, sticks everything together, right? It is the overarching kind of structure of the game that like brings in a lot of features that Fortress Mode feels like it's missing. Because kind of the way Dwarf Fortress, in my opinion, is intended to be played isn't the way a lot of people are playing it right now. Uh, most people who are playing the game on Steam currently are playing it as just a, just a, uh, a city builder. Right, which is fair. That's how a lot of people have always played it. But the way the game feels like it's intended to be played, from my perspective, is more of a, you play a, round, a couple rounds of this mode, followed by a couple rounds of that mode, and you kind of alternate. You build a fortress, you run an adventurer, you build another fortress, you run an adventurer, you build a fortress, you build a fortress, you run two adventurers, you run four adventurers, you take a big party of adventurers, let's say 12, we're just gonna be playing a single adventurer, um, let's say 12, and uh, go on some adventures, have go on some quests, slay a dragon, have the dragon's skull, claim a location, and then start a fortress there, right? It, it's, it's not a, you're playing a fortress, you play an adventure, you go back to the same fortress, you play an adventure. The game doesn't really lend itself to that super well, because the way the game's under the hood AI works kind of ruins your fortress when you leave it. So that point when you're playing a fortress and you're like, man, I'm bored. That's when you start an adventurer. And then by the time you're done with a couple adventures, you're, that's the point where you would go back to a uh, a fortress, a new fortress, or start it, or start a new fortress with a different faction. We are going to be playing, I think, just a dwarf hero for start seas. I don't know if we'll be, we'll probably end up doing multiples. Um, there appears to be three different goblin, or not goblin, dwarven uh, factions that we could play as. There's the praised realms, the dwarf Condries, and the post of wiping. Well, I'm not gonna lie, I don't wanna be wiped on a post, and I also don't wanna use a post to wipe. <laughs> so I think we should either start off as the Praised Realms, which is interesting, because they don't actually have many Dwarven sites, um, or the Door of Quandries. I think we're gonna start off with the Door of Quandries, just purely because of the sites that they have located around. This might all look kinda intimidating, but realistically, this is just like a character sheet builder for any tabletop RPG, right? We select a starting location. So there's a Dwarven Hillix, 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 or a Dwarven Fortress. Pro tip, at least in this version, do not start in a Dwarven Fortress. Because if you can find the exit, I'll be impressed. They're kind of maze-like. Uh, you really want to start in a Hillix if you're playing a Dwarf or a town, so that it's very easy for you to find the surface and start adventuring out. Um, for those of you who don't know, uh, Helixes, because you probably haven't seen them in, in current, like, world Dwarf Fortress much, Helixes are uh, surface forts for dwarves they, that, the, that the AI builds. The little flickering X right there is indicating where on the map our, our Helix is. You can kind of see it if I zoom in a little bit more. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but such is the way of this version of Dwarf Fort. Um, it doesn't matter if I'm using a tile set or not, it'll be kind of hard to see. So I, I like this one because it's like kind of further south. I'm a little bit worried about being too far north. If we're too far north, it's gonna be hard for us to get things like water. And believe it or not, water is kind of important when you're playing adventure mode. That or like, you know, your 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 source of liquid um, freezing as an example. So we're gonna start off in Golden Cruise. Now next we can pick our occupation. So this gives us a list, which may seem familiar. Uh, we have all of our different occupations. Uh, I'm going to, uh, let's make us a, ooh, let's make us an engraver. 
Uh, you are an engraver in Golden Cruise, a dwarven hillox. You have never strayed far from home. You are a worshipper of the Diamond Brightness, the god of day and minerals, and you belong to the Aquamarine Fellowship. So that is our little character right there so far. Now, of course, you could skip all this and just hit next and uh, just kind of ignore all of this. Um, but here, uh, the Aquamarine Fellowship is a religion of those who adhere to the worship of the Diamond Brightness, the god of day and minerals. There's other gods here, so we could select our god if we wanted to. The Festive Fellowship is a religion who adheres to the worship of Amur Pot Curses, uh, the god of, of revelry, festivals, dance, murder, and death. I... That's cool, actually. Festivals, dance, murder, and death. That's like the metalhead god. Uh, we are a male dwarf named Zulban. That's a good name. Uh, we could set our first name if we wanted to. I could add a nickname. Um, I could customize the name. Uh, I could randomize the name, but I think Zulban is a good name for our dwarf. And now we end up with this. This is your, your skill tree. So... Your skill tree uh, is relatively important. You, you may recognize a lot of these if you've been playing Fortress Mode. Uh, you see we got Strength, Agility, Toughness, Endurance, uh, 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 Recuperation. I can't read that word today. Uh, disease Resistance, Analytical Ability, Focus, Willpower, Creativity, Intuition, Patience, Memory, Linguistic Ability is, is, is important. Do you want to be able to talk? You need some linguistic ability. Let's just give us like above average linguistic ability. Um, empathy, uh, you may not want empathy if you wanna be killing things, just just a statement. Um, social, aware social awareness, you know, like people around you. Um, now remember, lowering these does give you more skill points. Um, we are going to increase our strength. Um, we are gonna increase our agility. We're gonna increase our toughness, endurance, uh, focus, uh, willpower. Um, we are going to keep creativity, patience, memory, sure, spatial sense, all right. Um, we do worship the god of music and dance. Uh, maybe we drop our social awareness and, like, see if I can cram any of these points up a little bit. Should be okay for punching thing and being decent at singing. And then over here we've got uh, other skills which are, have their own series of uh, options. So um, building designer, appraiser. Organizer, record keeper, student. Um, and then we also have all of these, the rest of the, the skills. Um, some of these are important, some of these are not. Uh, we get bonuses in, in engravers because of our profession. We are a proficient engraver. Um, I'm thinking, give myself some points in fighting. So let's, where's reading? Reading's in here somewhere. You wanna be able to read. <laughs> you can't read, well, good luck. Writer, there it is. Wordsmith, poet, speaker, reader. You want to be able to read. Um, let's be spear swords or hammers, chat. Spear swords or hammers, what do we want? Eh, we might just die. <laughs> it's totally fair. We may absolutely just die. All right, so this is our description. If anybody wants to doodle this, you're welcome to. His hair is straight, his medium length sideburns are neatly combed, his very long mustache is arranged in double braids, his very long beard is neatly combed, and his short hair is neatly combed. His somewhat narrow, tall ears are splayed out, and his, he has a narrow nose, which is extremely short. He has a broad chin, and his eyelashes are quite long. His eyebrows are somewhat high, and his brown skin is slightly wrinkled. His amethyst eyes are close set, and his hair is gold with a touch of gray make a large party of weak goblins and see who survives. I'm, we're keeping it simple for starters. I'm assuming that most people here have never seen adventure mode before. So when you make a large party, when you take steps, they're all talking and doing stuff between each other, which pops up on the screen constantly, which in my opinion is going to make it kind of difficult to follow. So my goal for this stream is to just make adventure mode as easy to follow in an ASCII setting as possible. And this is our personality. And you can see our needs and wants. His personality sees competition as wasteful and silly, and he finds the pursuit of knowledge to be a waste of effort. He dreams of raising a family, and he has lacks confidence in his abilities and has an over overinflated sense of self-worth. Uh, more likely, we'll be punching random wild animals. I might not even venture into a cobalt cave off the bat. Um, okay, so, so this is our personality. He sees competition as wasteful and silly, finds the pursuit of knowledge to be a waste of effort, and dreams of raising a family. Lacks confidence in his abilities, has an overinflated sense of self-worth, desires little for himself in the way of possessions, and forms only fleeting and rare emotional bonds with others, often feels discouraged, and does not often feel lustful. 
Aside from that last bit, this kind of sounds like me. Doesn't, doesn't try to get things done perfectly and doesn't really easily hate or develop negative feelings. He could be considered rude and he can handle stress. He tends to be a bit stubborn about changing his mind about things and occasionally overindulges. So aside from the lustful bit, this actually does sound like me. Uh, like, uh, like others in his culture, he holds craft worship to be of the highest ideals and celebrates talented artisans and their masterworks. Uh, we have a moderate need to drink alcohol. We have a... Admi we need to admire art. Okay, uh, I will watch the how-to basic video on that. Uh, we need to be with family. That's a moderate need. Uh, we need to stay occupied. We need to eat good meals. And we need to craft objects, um, which is a strong need. And uh, we need to be with friends and practice skills. If you notice your character in adventure mode is crying, it means you probably need to complete one of those needs. What do you do if your character IRL is crying? Well, then you're either euphorically happy or extraordinarily upset and maybe go get a tissue. All right, so... Now's the part where my brain always kind of falls out of my ear a bit, or it used to when I was learning Dwarf Fortress originally. Um, so we have a Copper Warhammer. We have 255 points. I think I'm just going to get rid of that Warhammer immediately. And, uh, ha! There we go. New N. That's what I was looking for. Uh, <laughs> perfect. Weapons. Uh, Warhammers. Let's just give us a Silver Warhammer. Um because I had extra points. And I'm going to not add a second one. I'm going to increase the quality. We still have 93 points left. We just need a full set of clothing. Um, I'm not gonna worry too much about getting like food. Um, something else I'm gonna go with is I'm gonna bring ammo. I'm gonna bring a couple of copper bolts uh, because throwing copper bolts is useful. So let's grab a couple of those. It's good, like, you throw them at things. Uh, so we have a slightly better copper helm. We have a well-craft small copper helm, size for dwarves. Uh, we also have our, our nice uh, silver war hammer. Uh, we have hamster leather trousers, giant hamster leather trousers, guinea fowl. Oh my god, if we could tame a giant hamster. Uh, I don't remember the hotkey uh, options for that, but guinea fowl leather dress, uh, wild boar leather uh, robe. Uh, we have uh, gloves, we have socks, we have shoes, we have a leather backpack, we have deer meat, we have a Cody leather water skin, which is filled with dwarven wine, uh, we have copper bolts, and we have a small copper helm and chinchilla meat. We, we, we're not striking the earth today, so... To adventure? You finally got your equipment, equipment together, such as it is. Now it's time for action and adventure. In the rush of excitement, you've forgotten where you were going to go. A foolhardedly soul might try to rescue the children that have been kidnapped. Perhaps some of your friends here have ideas. Press question mark for help. And just like classic Dwarf Fortress, you can press question mark for help. And then on the help screen, if you still need more help, you can ask for more help. And then on the help help stream, you can ask for more and more help. And then it'll tell you that you've pressed the key many times uh, from the text viewer's help screen. Press escape to go back to that screen. I don't know how to explain it any further. Go to the forums at bay12games.com if, you if you're having technical issues. I can then press it again, and it'll say, you have pressed the help key many times. You only need to press the help key once, no matter how urgent your problem may seem at the time. Press escape key to go back to the previous screen. Despite my promise of to, ha to have the help screen work on any screen, it doesn't work on this screen. If you are having technical trouble, go to bay12games.com and ask for help on the forums. More importantly, what's around me? Well, let's let's start there. I hit K. Um, well, it can tell me I can be begin a performance because K isn't, in fact, the look button. I need to hit L to look. Um, sorry, I'm used to a different video game. Uh, so that's me. I am that blinking little X right there. I am a proficient engraver, adequate hammer dwarf, novice thrower, novice swimmer, and dabbling tracker. I, I'm a novice reader and a competent fighter, novice wrestler, biter, striker, kicker, dodger, climber, adequate musician. I bad at poems, uh, but I do know some, and uh, um, I, I, I also uh, know some songs as well. Uh, the Incense of Plays, as an example. Uh, I need to socialize, stay occupied, be creative, excitement, drink alcohol, drink, eat a good meal, fight, cause trouble, argue, be extravagant, learn something, and help somebody. We need to think abstractly, be, make merry, and admire art, craft objects, and be with family, be with friends, and get martial training. We also need to practice skills and take it easy. Uh, we're undistracted currently. So because that is me, right there. I can look around. We're in a little mud hut. 
which is why there's some quarry bushes and longland grass growing everywhere. In fact, we are literally in a garden right now. There's quarry bushes growing all the way around us, which is kind of funny. Uh, there's a willow table over here, and right next to me is a ginkgo wood cabinet. Two, in fact. Um, over here we have plumwood table, uh, there is a fungi wood chair, and over here is uh, the leather worker named Inges. Uh, over here we have a, a another a glazer named Meng, and down here uh, we have the farmer named Feb. Now, I can make your guys' life a little bit easier and zoom the game in, so when I start moving, the camera will center on me. Once again, I am this at symbol. We are currently standing, and uh, there is a thing in front of me. It's a statue, I think. Yes, it's a calcite statue. So this calcite statue, view the selected's description by hitting V. This is a calcite statue of Kodal Workblushed. On the items, an image of Kodal Workblushed, the dwarf and dwarves in calcite. Kodal Workblushed is surrounded by the dwarves. The artwork relates to the election of the dwarf Kodal Workblushed, position of sacred hope of the festive fellowship of the midwinter of 63. We do not worship the festive fellowship, but we do worship a similar god, so I'm sure that we can understand a little bit of that. We can now walk around a little bit outside. We remember that there were people inside and we can still hear them, hence the exclamation points and the kind of the last known locations. Even though we can no longer see them, we know that they are still there, which just makes me think of peach trees. And we have a bigger ginkgo wood tree trunk over here. So these are all trees, all these zeros. Now, this might seem confusing, but up above my head, there are two mini maps, right? Um, because this is a multi-level game, right? We can see one level up and one level down. So if there is stuff beneath us, we can see one level down. If there's stuff above us, we can see one level up. If I move up on top of this, we can still see down one level because there's nothing above us. If I move down, if I move down one, we can see what's up above us because there's stuff up above us. Uh, if I move over here to this ramp and we move to the edge of it, both of them will pop up where I can see one layer below as well as one layer above. The one layer above is obviously just a tiny little bit of dirt right here on the corner. And the one layer below is this. If there's units down there and stuff, those are very useful little viewports, but um, that's it. So it lets you see up and down. Also that, yeah, Toasty Joe. So if something is, if stuff is gray, it means we know it's there, but it's out of our line of sight currently. If it has color, it means we can currently see it. That's a good call out, yeah. So we're just kind of wandering around our vicinity right here. Um, at oop, There's some people over there, we can hear them. At any point I can press G and I can pick up stuff from the ground. Here specifically, I can get clay, I can make a campfire, I can get loam. Uh, be careful where you make campfires. I have started, like, forest fires before. Um, you can also just ignite things and set things on fire. Also, if you need help, um, something that's very useful is actually this screen, which is your key bindings. Uh, you know, I, I will probably actually be referencing this quite frequently, which is, you know, your view announcements, uh, found a site. Uh, that's very important. Found a site and build. Um, although, I'm not entirely certain that that is going to be in fully in... Uh, in the first release, Tarn was saying it might not make it, but it would be in shortly after. Uh, you can drop items, eat or drink something. If you try and eat or drink something that isn't food, your dwarf will lick it. So if you try and eat a sword, your dwarf will lick it, which is kind of funny. Um, you, I can fire a projectile, I can pick up an item, in, I inventory, um, interact is capital I instead of lowercase I, I think, unless they've changed that. Then U is to interact with uh, furnitures and other things. Yeah, so interact with an object in an advanced way. So like, filling up um, uh, an item, cooking something. Um, if I recall correctly, X. Yeah, so um, X allows us to, gives us our crafting slash butchering menu. Um, so I, I can create, I can make a sharp rock, I can make, I can carve a bone, I can carve a wooden helve from a branch and I can assemble a stone X, which I'm assuming, which I think needs a branch and a small rock. I, we have the natural ability to spit and pet animals. There are smells, yes. Was the smells overlay is something that uh, Tarn was talking about. There's also tracking. Watching adventure mode explains why the line of sight works the way it does. It'll also explain a lot of things like, oh, if I have a very high hunting skill, suddenly my line of sight doubles. Stuff like that. Um, acquired power, currently we don't have any. Uh, compose, we can compose a poem or a musical composition, or we can write, right? So let's, so we pick a type of song and then we're, we're composing a musical composition. We, we wait, you can see the world map, and uh, you have composed uh, plaints and nothing more. The work is no particular particular subject for, for lyrics. The composer has selected the birth of thralls. Uh, overall, the composition is not awful, but not very good either. Hey, we wrote a thing, so that's cool. Um, if we would like to find a quest or a thing to do, we can speak with random people. Let's move back into here and let's speak to somebody because I just wrote a song. Uh, this is uh, the Leatherworker Mong uh, Inga's, uh, Moning Glukrud. We can greet them, and we say, hey, Inga's, and the leather worker says, hello, it's good to see you. And we have an ongoing conversation now. 
which we would pop up by hitting K a second time. They're neutral towards us. We can we, we can uh, bring up a specific incident or a rumor. Uh, we can ask how the listener is feeling. We can inquire about any troubles. We can ask for directions, uh, which I will never do because I am a, a, a cis male. You you can ask some you can ask about somebody. Uh, you can ask about the local ruler, trades or debts, exchange, give or uh, show personal items, ask a favor, place a request, make a demand, issue order, uh, investigate or interrogate. Uh, we can ask a listener to join us. Um, we can claim the site uh, for our self um or, or try to um and uh we we can ask for permission to stay for the day which is pretty important because things like to kill you at night um you can ask the site about the neighbors and trade partners uh we can ask about the surrounding area express your emotions blah 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 blah, 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 blah comment on the weather uh brag about your violent acts or say goodbye we are going to inquire about any troubles the leather worker says well let's see uh, we've got abductions uh beasts bandits and the missing treasure uh let, let's ask about the treasure and the bandits. Let's just go with those two. Uh, the, the leather worker says the elf Thalu Raptor Gorge wants the swift muscle. The iron bow returned to elbow rough. Uh, the last I heard, it was held by the elf Yimi Chance Roars. Ongoing conversation. Okay, well, we can ask about the whereabouts of the elf. We can ask for the whereabouts of the other elf. We can ask for directions to the location. Um, so that's the first option. Um, let's inquire about troubles once again. Ask about the bandits. A leather worker says particular outlaws have been causing us much hardship. Uh, they have a pits called Torment Catch somewhere in the swamps of Quinescence. So now we have a lot more options here. We can ask for directions to that location. We can state the opinion that it must be stopped with violent force. We can tell them it's not our problem. We can tell it's inev inevitable or just comment about that. It's terrifying. Uh, we can uh, state that we don't know anything about it. Uh, I don't know anything about that. Uh, sounds like a, the sort of thing a, a, a bard would say. Uh, we can state that it is for the best. Uh, we can state that we don't care. Uh, we can state an opinion that it is sad, but not unexpected. We can tell them that it's terrible or state that it's terrific. Q for quest log. Okay. Um, well, obviously it must be stopped with violent force. You, this must be stopped by any means at our disposal. Let's ask for directions. The leather worker Ingus says, Cormant Tatch is far to the south. Uh, you receive a detailed description. Uh, in the late autumn of 36, the post of wiping defeated the puzzles and pillage of the Defeated the Thief of Puzzles and pillaged Torment Catch. They must like stealing Puzzle Bond. Uh, the dialogue options are the same for all conversations. However, depending on who you're talking to, they will respond with variations. The dialogue is one of those things in Dwarf Fortress that you need to kind of read into a little bit. Think of it like when you're looking at your dwarves talking in combat, where they say, it is terrifying, it is inevitable, and things like that. Um, it's very simple, but... In my opinion, Zack's writing, because Zack's the one who does the writing for Dwarf Fortress, Zack's writing is interesting because he does a very good job of giving you a clear enough picture of what is going on. You can generally deduce it without Im being immediately aware the surround it, of the surroundings, if that makes any sense. Like, you have enough, you can get enough of an idea of what's going on from their responses that it builds a picture in your mind even if the dialogue itself isn't the most varied the dialogue system is pretty complex but the actual variation of dialogue you'll get is so so because they'll they'll give you a location they'll tell you what's happening and then you can respond as you see fit and it'll elicit a different response i mean you could just walk into a room and accuse somebody of being a were creature and they'll either attack you or everybody will attack them stuff like that like it's like you can cause some real chaos if you're a bad person like, I could just murder hobo every person in this in this room. Even though, like, I'm technically part of their faction. And, like, there there is no main character protection here. Like, I, I, if, if, you, if you have a violence boner, you can just pfft, everything if you wanted to. Also, I have a silver warhammer, and I'm pretty sure most of these people are unarmed. 